Hey babes, it's Lorena. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. I'm Lorena and I just want to say congratulations if this is going to be your first year at Stella Adler. I'm just super excited for everything you're going to learn and experience and all of the things you're going to accomplish and it's just going to be amazing and yeah. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys what my first year at Stella Adler was like, like all the things I learned and just giving you guys tips and inspiration on how to prepare for your first year at Stella Adler. This video will be helpful not only if you're an NYU Tisch drama student, but also if you're in the Stella Adler evening or day conservatory program. So without further ado, let's get into it. So tip number one, familiarize yourself with the area. This helped me so much because when I first got to New York City, I just didn't feel confident in starting my first day at Stella Adler because I didn't know where the studio was. I had never seen it, so I just didn't feel that connection. Well, I'm gonna give you guys a mini tour since we can't really tour it in person right now. So the Stella Adler Studio of Acting is located in the financial district of New York City. And 2019 was actually its first time there. It moved from its previous spot, which I'm not exactly sure where it was, but it was there for ever. It's located at 65 Broadway, which is right next to one of the most famous street signs in the world, Rector Street and Broadway, which is right in front of the New York Stock Exchange and right next to Trinity Church, which all of it just holds so much history and it's just really beautiful to be there. You're also around a lot of historical landmarks and really cool stuff to explore uh, when you have breaks or things like that. I mean, basically, we're a whole bunch of drama students studying at Wall Street, which is super cool. The studio is located in what used to be the American Express building, so it's really nice. Inside, it's filled with elevators, and there's a guy at a front desk that just makes sure that you're supposed to be there. The studio actually takes up the TP or basement level of the building, as well as the second floor, so you'll be going up and down the elevators a lot when you're in person, depending on where your classes are. And there are a whole bunch of restaurant options all around and a lot of them are super affordable so don't worry about that because for me food is quite important and there are options. So now that we're more familiar with the area, let's move on to tip number two, get your blacks ready. I know that the dress code at Stella Adler may seem like kind of annoying at first, especially because we all want to show off our style and our cool clothes and everything, but honestly, and I'm going to tell you this seriously because I love fashion, the dress code really grows on you. Not only does it make getting dressed in the morning like super easy because you already know you just have to wear all black, but I honestly feel like it really makes or it takes away from the distraction that like cool clothes can cause in a setting like that and it makes you learn so much better. Like, I really, really love it. So for your in-person movement, voice and speech, and character classes, you're required to wear all black clothing, again, when you're in person. And for your other classes, it's kind of up to you, but I have to say, like, roughly 98% of the students will stay in their all black clothing because it's easy, it's comfortable, and you don't have to be changing throughout the day. So. That's what I would say about that. But I know that for remote classes, you actually are allowed to wear just solid colored clothing. So as long as it's not like, you know, crazy print or anything, you're good. But when I was taking remote classes in the spring, we all started out with solid, col solid colored clothing because it was something different. But eventually we all ended up in our Adler Blacks again. So I feel like that just says something about our dedication to the work and how attached you start to get to wearing black clothes when you're training so yeah a big question i've gotten from incoming adler students is what counts as movement clothes and that's a great question because when i saw the dress code for the first time i was a little confused but basically you can wear those thick fitness leggings just make sure they're not see-through or transparent you just you know you don't want anyone to be looking at your undies um also joggers are really great sweatpants as long as they're not too loose and for shirts you can wear like v-necks uh crew neck t-shirts anything that's super comfortable and i would also recommend to layer up because sometimes the studio can get cold or if you're studying remotely maybe your room gets too cold so you might want to have some cardigans some pullover sweaters some zip up hoodies anything like that you that you can easily take off or put on depending on how cold or how hot the room is 
And I just want to say, in some classes, you're allowed to wear socks. And for me, this was the way I would show off my personality. So I always had fun, colorful socks, especially pink socks. Like, I had so many pink socks with a lot of designs on them and stuff. So they haven't really said anything about colorful socks yet. So I would encourage you to do the same if that sounds like something you do. And adding to the dress code, you're not supposed to wear any jewelry at all. Like, none. Including with jewelry, like, no accessories. So no headbands, no scarves, no studs even if they're small no necklaces bracelets watches nothing and I would also recommend even though it's kind of like not in the rules but to not have crazy nails like me right now you know um, try to keep them like short simple and neutral because you don't want it to take away from your work like you're gonna be doing characters that are like not someone modern so you might want to just reconsider just an option and more than anything this rule with accessories and jewelry is for safety because you're gonna be moving around a lot and you don't want it to get stuck or caught on anything and then like you start bleeding you know so and adding to that you're gonna want to have your hair pulled back if you have longer hair so I would suggest always keeping a scrunchie with you if you like to wear your hair down because you're gonna have to have it pulled back or pulled up in a bun where it doesn't get in your face for a lot of your movement classes and oh let me tell you guys, this is super important. You're gonna need a thick headband that doesn't slide off, or if it starts to slide, like get some bobby pins so it'll stay in place um, when you have your hair back for your movement class. It's gonna be so important. So I'll put a little picture of what that should look like, but you need it, like for sure. And if you love makeup like me, I would definitely suggest you start working on a very natural routine because it's very encouraged that you wear little to no makeup just because again like the focus is on the work and when I first started like I didn't understand I was like I'm gonna go full glam to this class and I just would suggest you don't because like the focus is on learning and like I can't I can't even describe it but I would just say like try to wear very little foundation um, maybe do your eyebrows wear your glasses if you need them like this is a focus time and you're gonna understand how intense it is once you start and I really ended up loving this minimal makeup rule because it made me embrace like my natural beauty a lot more and it made me gain some self-confidence with a bare face. So honestly, it ends up being good for you if you like to wear makeup like me. And as for shoes, there's really no rules. You can really wear whatever you want. But if you're going to be in the city, I would suggest you wear some comfortable sneakers in case you're going to be walking around a lot. Now that that's done, tip number three, be prepared for a long schedule. So I actually have it written down right here, but the classes for First year students typically take include voice and speech, scene study, movement technique, acting technique, neutral mask, improv, character class, ballet, and Shakespeare class. So a few of these classes meet twice a week and some of them are like semester only. So you'll see as you get your schedule, but this is what you can expect for your entire first year. Just keep in mind that during remote learning, the schedules and the classes may be quite different, especially in like the amount of classes you're allowed to take. So this could change, but just keep that in mind. Okay, tip number four, taking notes. So you're going to want to take really good notes because the things the professors are going to be saying are going to be like pure nuggets of acting gold. And you're going to want to be able to look back on these, especially as you grow as an artist. Now, in the classes, you're not allowed to use any devices to take notes. So no laptop, no um, iPads, no tablets, nothing. They have to be handwritten. So actually, I started out taking my notes in a regular sized notebook. And then the second semester, I ended up getting a smaller one. And I loved it so much more. I felt like much more connected to my notes. It was much funner to write them. But this is obviously a personal preference. You do you in regards to your notes. And I would also suggest you don't get a separate notebook for every class. I really don't think it's necessary. You can keep one notebook for your entire semester at Adler. You might want to change it like every semester because you really fill that thing up. And I also recommend you get some highlighters for when you have to do some scene work or have to highlight important information in your notes. And I also suggest you get a folder because that way you can keep in all your handouts and any other papers you gather. Tip number five, 
prepare your space. This is going to be especially important for those that are taking remote learning or are doing distance learning, whatever it's called, online classes basically. And it's just super important because this allows you to get the most you can out of your classes. So I recommend finding a space if you can in your home, in your dorm, where you have a lot of space to move around because for some of these classes you're really going to need that space. And also in setting up your computer or whatever device you're using, you're going to want to make sure that if you're gonna be sitting on the floor if you're gonna be standing up anything like that that you're clearly visible in the camera so it would be good to have quite a bit of space so if you move around you're still seen on camera and just make sure this area is gonna be somewhere where you're not interrupted where there's not gonna be any distractions going on because again you want to be able to get the most out of your classes and you want to make sure you can stay focused and now a small tour of my remote learning study space and things you might need so I already had this ring light prior to the start of remote classes, but I highly recommend it, especially if you're in a dark space. This one is dimmable, so you can change the brightness and you'll get so much use out of it. Not just for classes, but auditions, photos, and so much more. I also love that you can move it around to wherever you need it. Here, I'm at my desk. Another thing you might want to think about investing in is a good yoga mat. You're going to be doing a lot of floor work and you want to make sure you're not going to be laying down on a hard surface and hurting your back. I love this mat because it's super thick and easy to store away. You should also think about where you're going to be positioning your laptop. Foldable tables like this one are super affordable and don't take up a lot of space. As you can see, I have my essential items on it such as my laptop, AirPods, pens, and my water bottle. And on the floor, I placed my folder and my notebook. You can also get creative like I did here. I placed a lap desk over this ottoman and put my laptop and other essential items on top. It works super great. And for the times you're not doing floor work, you're going to need a table or a desk to set your computer on to take class. Here I'm sitting at my vanity and it has all my essential items on it, but it feels way too cluttered because I have all my makeup stuff on there too. So my mom took my childhood desk out of the garage, gave it a little paint job, and it looks great. So try to get creative when setting up your own study area. Okay guys, time for bonus tips. Make sure you get yourself a water bottle because it's gonna be so necessary when you're in your classes. You wanna make sure you're hydrated and since you're gonna be moving around a lot, you're definitely gonna get thirsty. So I recommend getting something cute that you're gonna wanna reach for and that it's easily refillable. And also, this is not gonna make a lot of sense right now, but you're gonna wanna get yourself a cork, a small handheld mirror or a mirror that can fit into your hands and a little baggie to make sure they're kept together and away from germs and things like that and you're going to be using this a lot in your voice and speech class and you'll know what I'm talking about when you're told you need it but it would be good if you start getting it beforehand just so you're not stressing out about it so babes that's everything for this video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found uh, inspiration tips information anything that's going to help you on how to prepare for your first year at Stella Adler I could include so much more information but I did not want to make this too long and I just want to say, if you guys have any questions, concerns, anything you want to talk about, you can always leave it in the comments or you can send me a DM on Instagram. I'm literally always on there, but I'm here for you guys and I'm sending you positive vibes. It's going to be amazing. You're going to have so much fun and you're going to learn so much. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and make sure you hit the subscribe button because I have a lot more content coming your way. That's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.